Hi, I officially welcome you to Health Tech on Das TV. Um, this is one of the programs where we talk about health-related issues. If you are here, I want you to feel comfortable. It's never a mistake being here because we are going to learn a lot from this video today. Today, I wanted to talk about a disease, one of the commonest disease that is actually ruining the happiness of many people, and that is peptic ulcer. If you have the disease already, I believe that you watching this video to the end will do you a lot of good. But if you don't have the disease yet and you are watching this video, whatever I'm going to say here will be of best help to you. So um, watch this video to the end. I'll also be very happy if you can share this video to as many people as you can because um, as you are enjoying it, uh, you must give room for others to also enjoy as well. Well, uh, you are on Dance TV and this program is Health Tech. Um, it is dedicated to talking about health related issues. So, if you want to learn more about your health, I will entreat you to always join me on this platform so that you can learn more and learn more about our health. Um, I've spoken much about certain conditions and you can find out on my YouTube channel, which is Das TV. And perhaps if you are watching me from Facebook, you can also like my page and follow me as well, Das TV. Um, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and you get more of my teachings. I mean, she's talking about health related issues and perhaps business and finance in relation to my experiences and their knowledge in that aspect. So, without wasting much of your time, today I'm going to talk about peptic cause as I earlier mentioned. You have heard of it before, I know, because it's a common disease. We usually refer to it as ulcer. Ulcer. You have heard, if not for anything, you have heard of ulcer before. So, that is what we are going to talk about. And we are going to learn a lot today. So do hit the subscribe button if you are watching me from YouTube and if you are watching me from Facebook right now, I have a link on top of this video that you can click on to get into my YouTube channel where you can get most of my videos, I mean very very educative videos to watch. So without wasting much of your time, today we are going to talk about um, what peptic cause is. So by the end of this video, you will be able to tell what peptic cause is. And then when I'm done with that, I will talk to you about the causes, what brings about peptic cause. So I always say that if you know what brings about a disease, definitely you can distance yourself from that thing and you wouldn't get it. But because many people don't know what brings about disease A or disease B, even if they are standing very close to what brings about a disease, they wouldn't know. So it will be expedient on your part to always seek for health related information and I believe that you live longer than you expect. So um, when we are done with the causes of peptic ulcer, I will prefer that to talk about the signs and symptoms. I mean, they are the, I will let you know what you must see in your body um, for you to see that, oh, I have peptic ulcer or probably I'm a normal person. So I will talk about that one too. And then I will suggest some possible measures you can put in place to prevent yourself from getting peptic ulcer. That is if you don't have it. And then if you have it, I also suggest some measures you can incorporate to help you um, live a normal life well my name is Seth and I'm here to talk to you about peptic ulcer so without wasting much of your time I will start by letting you know what peptic ulcer is um, while the discussion goes on there will be some screen display that will make you understand whatever I'm talking about so I'll show you a picture of what the peptic ulcer looks like and um, I believe that that will make you Mm, I mean more comforting and give you the room to understand what I'm going to say here. Well, when we say peptic ulcer, it's a big word. Usually we are known to this disease as ulcer. We usually say ulcer, ulcer. So when you go to the hospital, um, you see that the nurse is asking you whether you have ulcer or the doctor is asking you whether you have ulcer. So um, peptic ulcer in short has been probably uh, been known by many as ulcer. When we say ulcer, ulcer is a sore or a wound. It's a sore or a wound. And as you know, a sore can be on the body or inside of the body. So you must take note of that. A sore can be inside the body or on the outside of the body. But when we talk about ulcer inside the body, then mostly we are thinking of the digestive system. And when we say the digestive system, is what breaks down the food we eat. So from your mouth, through to the anus, you understand? That makes up the digestive system. Um, you know, when you're taking food, it's supposed to move through a system. It's supposed to move through a tract, a tube, and that tube is what is known as the digestive tract. So from the mouth, it goes to the esophagus, and then from the esophagus to your stomach, and then from your stomach to the duodenum, and perhaps um, small intestine, large intestine, and then um, the waste products come out of your body as physics through the anus. 
Rubeptic ulcer is a condition that usually results um, and it affects the digestive tract. So the sore occurs in the digestive tract. Is it that it is occurring in the esophagus or it is occurring in the stomach as you are seeing on the screen or the first part of the small intestine which is the duodenum. So these are the three common places a wound or sore inside the body can be found. So now, um, peptic ulcer is a combination of two things. You see, the sore can occur in the stomach and, that, and the sore occurring in the stomach is known as the gastric ulcer. So bear in mind that another name for stomach is gastric in medical terms. So when you hear gastric, we are talking about stomach. So gastric ulcer is any ulcer or is any sore that occurs in the stomach, the lining of the stomach. The stomach is lined with some membranes. You understand? Now, when there is a sore on the membrane, it is termed as gastric ulcer. On the other hand, the sore can be found on the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. So a sore inside the duodenum is known as duodenal ulcer. So I believe you are getting the concept here. So one may be wondering, then what is peptic ulcer? Peptic ulcer is a combination of the two. But usually when you go to the hospital, um, it becomes very difficult to determine as to whether you are having peptic ulcer or duodenal ulcer. When you have duodenal ulcer plus gastric ulcer, that is when we term your condition as peptic ulcer. So basically, this is the general idea about peptic ulcer. So when we say peptic ulcer, in simple terms, it is a sore in the stomach and then the duodenum. It's as simple as that. So now that we know what peptic ulcer is, I want us to talk about the causes. One may be wondering, what at all brings about peptic ulcer? What at all brings about peptic ulcer? Before we talk about what causes peptic ulcer, which I think is the most important aspect of this video, I would want to remind you that if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is that TV, um, please hit the subscribe button right under this video so that anytime I upload a new video on health tech, you'll be the first person to get it. Um, also, make sure that you hit the notification bell. It says there's a small bell close to the subscription button. And when you do that, what you've done is that anytime I upload a new video, YouTube will notify you and then you quickly get it to watch. Um, also, I want to remind you that you are still on health test. This is a program where we talk about health related issues. So, subsequently, you'll be hearing issues relating to health on this channel. And as a matter of fact, my YouTube page, which is Das TV. So, if you are watching me from Facebook, I would like you to like my Facebook page. So, now we can move on to talk about the causes of peptic ulcer. You see, peptic ulcer, as we know to be one of the serious conditions has a cause. See, there are some of the conditions that are probably idiopathic. I mean, uh, the causes are unknown. But then with peptic water, it is believed that it is caused by one particular bacteria known as the H. pylori. We usually refer to it as the Helicobacter pylori. So take note, it's a microorganism. And um, before a doctor can say you have peptic ulcer, usually a test will be done to determine whether your condition is caused by this particular bacteria. So as you can see on the screen, this is the nature of the bacteria, the Helicobacter pylori or the H. pylori. So this is an organism that causes peptic ulcer. So um, probably it can enter your body through many medium. Um, when you, you know, um, you breathe in air and then um, probably what you breathe in, we can't really determine as whether it is too hygienic. Microorganisms roam in the air, probably in the atmosphere and as and when we breathe, we can actually get them inside our body. Another medium through which the H. pylori can enter our body may be through eating um, contaminated food or drinking contaminated water. So you have to be very careful of all these things. Otherwise, you invite the um, bacteria inside your body and then start, and it will start causing the peptic ulcer. It's a very painful condition and um, those who have it can testify. But then if you are careful or if you are probably meticulous about your health, you can prevent yourself from getting such a condition. And if you have it and you take the measures into consideration, you will be safe as well. So the major cause of this condition is the bacteria I talked about, the H. pylori. Um, besides this organism causing the um, peptic ulcer, there are other risk factors. And when you say risk factors, they are not a direct cause. They do not directly cause the disease, but then their um, presence can bring about the disease. 
So for example, if um, you starve yourself, I mean starvation, if you starve yourself for long, you don't eat, probably, you know you are supposed to eat three times a day, you wait and um, you don't, I mean you don't eat frequently, you wait for a longer period before you eat. Um, it's one of the risk factors that can bring about peptic ulcer. Also, um, also alcoholism is a risk factor to um, peptic ulcer. If you take in too much alcohol, you are liable to having peptic ulcer. So besides alcoholism being one of the risk factors of peptic ulcer, this condition can also be caused by stress. You see, it is believed that when you stress yourself too much, more stomach acid is produced. And you know, um, I don't know whether you've experienced the point where you have a wound on your skin and something like a hot substance like yes, the acid or pepper falls on the soil. I don't know that I don't know whether you've had such experience before. That is what happens when you have ulcer in your stomach and the stomach produces more acid um, through stress. What happens here is that the acid irritates the soil in the stomach and then you feel more pain. So that is basically the phenomenon or the, the physiology behind um, having um, a lot of pain when it comes to um, peptic ulcer. So stress can bring about peptic ulcer and then eating spicy foods. So uh, if you are watching me and then you like eating spicy foods um, every now and then, you have to be very watchful, you have to be very careful with your health, otherwise you are liable to getting peptic ulcer. This is very very important. So without knowing, I want us to profit us to talk about the signs and symptoms. You know, um, knowing the causes is very very important and I believe that I have said that in this video. So now, if you are in the house and you are experiencing some of the symptoms, I mean the signs and symptoms I'm going to talk about in this video, then you are, it can be said that you are having peptic cause so you should quickly go to the hospital for medical treatment. The first signs and symptoms you experience is burning abdominal pain. Usually, you may feel pain in your stomach or probably your abdomen and the pain is relieved when you eat. So, um, after you have eaten, you said that you realize that you are feeling comfortable. The pain has gone down, it has subsided, you understand? So, if you are in the house and you experience burning abdominal pain and it goes right after you finish eating, then you should know that you are getting the tick ulcer. So, you must quickly um, pay attention to that. Besides having abdominal pains, you can have a feeling of fullness or bloating or belching. Usually, um, like that kind of sound, I mean, when you overeat, yeah, belching. So, when you have that kind of feeling, frequent feeling of belching, um, feeling of fullness, then you should suspect peptic ulcer. You must immediately go to a nearby health facility for treatment. Um, if you have peptic ulcer, you can experience heart burns. It's like you feel some kind of, I mean, pain in your um, chest. That is how it's prepared to have the heart burns. Because usually, um, the acid, because there is no food in the stomach to neutralize the acid, the stomach produces. Some of the acids, because there are too much in the stomach, would tend to um, travel up to your supercourse. And when that happens, you see, the, the, the acid coming into contact with the, um, the mucosa, the lining of the esophagus, will bring about the burning sensation around that area. So without knowing, you can also have um, vomiting blood. You can probably vomit blood. So when at the point in time you vomit and then you see blood stains in the vomit, you should suspect peptic ulcer because you see, there's a wound there and it might happen that the wound is bleeding. And that is an indication that you are having peptic ulcer. You have sore in your stomach. You can also experience nausea. And it's as usual, and then back blood in stools. So when you defecate or when you pass stool and you realize that or you see that there is, I mean, dark, I mean, the, the, the stool is dark in nature, you should, you should suspect peptic ulcer because you see, um, it might indicate that the wound in the stomach or the duodenum is bleeding and it has mixed up with the feces, and that will be given at the dark stool. So you should take note um, of that. So if not for anything, I've mentioned about six signs and symptoms that will probably prove that you have peptic ulcer. Usually, you may have abdominal pains which can be relieved when you eat, I mean, you take in food. You can also experience the feeling of fullness or bloating or belching. You can also have vomiting, I mean, blood 
and then um, you, have, you, you, you pass dark stools when you have a thick water. Then lastly, nausea and vomiting. I mean, so these are basically some of the signs and symptoms you experience when you have peptic ulcer. So the moment you see any of this, don't wait. Don't say you are you probably get fine. Just quickly go to the hospital and then get yourself treated. I think that's the best way so that you don't complicate the whole thing. Well, before you want to look at the measures you have to take to prevent yourself from getting peptic ulcer. Uh, if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so by hitting the subscribe button right under this video. And if you are watching me from Facebook, uh, there is a link on top of this video. You can just click on that and it will take you right into my YouTube channel where you can subscribe and watch um, all the videos I have made um, so far. Well, I still want to remind you that you are on health tech. This is a platform where we talk about health related issues. And I will entreat you to always join me, be part of the family where we can learn about our health every now and then because health they say is wealth when you have good health you can go about your normal duties and never be disappointed in life actually you can aspire and then move on and i mean take on whatever thing you want to do in life so be very much concerned about your health and then um be meticulous about it so i may be wondering what can i do to prevent myself from getting particles it's as simple as that so let's look at the causes. What brings about peptic ulcer? We made mention of the fact that there is a bacteria known as the H. pylori. Now the question is how can you prevent yourself from having this microorganism inside your body? I already mentioned some of the modes with which this organism can enter your body. Through contaminated water, through contaminated food, you understand? And then living in an unhygienic environment. So. One of the measures you can, let me say, three of the measures you can inculcate to prevent yourself from getting peptic ulcer or to prevent the organism from entering your body, which eventually um, will bring our peptic ulcer, is to first of all make sure that you are eating in a hygienic environment or you are staying in a hygienic environment. Secondly, you also have to make sure that you prepare, I mean, you wash fruits and vegetables um, before you put them in your mouth or before you take them. Um, thirdly, you have to make sure that you, the water you are taking inside your body is hygienic, it's very clean. These are basically the three main things you can do to prevent the microorganisms from entering your body, which at the end of the day will cause peptic ulcer. Also, we also mentioned on the fact that starvation is another thing that can bring about peptic ulcer. So what this means is that you shouldn't starve yourself. You should make sure that you are always having something in your stomach. Like you shouldn't. Um, it's, it's a different ball game altogether when you are starving. I mean, probably when you are fasting. But then, uh, frequently starving yourself over and over again can predispose you to peptic ulcer. So you must take note of that. Another important thing is to prevent yourself from. I mean, is to avoid taking alcohol. If you are that type who loves to take alcohol, probably before you eat, you would want to take alcohol. You would want to take a thought. Then you have to advise yourself. Um, within these minutes that you are watching this video because it can predispose you to peptic ulcer. Um, another thing to take note of is to never stress yourself too much. Um, and count, if you encounter any stressful situation, you must try as much as possible to um, be at ease and then take everything at a cool level. Don't stress yourself. If the work is too much for you, don't do all at a go. Break it into pieces. Do one at a time so that you don't get stressed out because the moment you stress yourself out, what happens here is that um, the stomach acid becomes more, more of the stomach acid is produced and when that happens, um, it will actually irritate the soul and then bring about pain. Usually when there is too much of the acid being produced um, on the line of the stomach, what happens is that it's likely to bring about a show. So that is why you must not stress yourself too much to um, help reduce the rate at which the stomach acid is produced. Another thing to take note of is to avoid eating spicy foods, especially if you have the condition. You know, um, we advise that people with peptic ulcer should avoid eating spicy foods. They shouldn't take drugs such as NSAIDs, like paracetamol, like brufin, like naproxen. All those medications should not be taken if you have peptic ulcer. So if you are not taking them, then it means that we are going to be at ease. There is no going to complicate the situation. So basically, these are some of the things you can do to avoid or probably prevent yourself from getting peptic ulcer. 
I believe that I have spoken to you much about this condition and you have learned a lot. I will entreat you to share this video to as many people as you can. As I am bringing this video to the very end, I want this to reach as many people um, so that they can also know how to do to prevent themselves from contracting this disease. Peptic gutter is really a painful disease that if you have it, probably you can really testify. If you are watching me from home or wherever and you have this disease, you can really testify how painful it is. So um, in this video, I have given you some measures to put into practice that can help you either prevent or minimize the risk at which this disease may pose problem to you. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Seth and um, it's good having you on Health Tech. I hope to see you in the next video. I'll be coming up with a new condition that I wanted to learn about. So I want to see you in my next video. But if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so by hitting the subscribe button right under this video. When that is done, make sure you click on the small bell close to the subscribe button. And YouTube will notify you anytime I upload a new video. Um, I really appreciate you for being with me up to this point. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.